Hello and welcome to the PPD YouTube channel folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. It's great to see you all again on another Twinkle Tip Friday and it's time for a Twinkle Tip video. We hope you guys have had a fantastic week. We're ready to roll into the weekend. It is the end of October and I've got an October surprise for you. Let's get started. All right, guys, welcome back. It is a Twinkle Tip Friday time, and I have a request, and this is coming from Timothy. He sent me a private message the other day, and he said, you know, I'd like to see something on camera views and X lights. So, Timothy, that's a really great question. And, you know, we really have never gone into any kind of detail. And that's what we're going to do in today's video, is we're going to talk about the 3D views, the camera views, or just the views in x lights using this layout behind me. And we're going to show you how to set your camera views. We're going to show you that you can sequence with those camera views. Or you can, if you want to, take effects that are already in your sequences that you've already mapped over and begin to uh, put some of these different camera views and effects uh, and apply them to the sequences you already have or the effects that you already have in your sequences. So what's nice about this is to activate 3D, just to go into 3D and, and get to the camera views, one of the first things you do is hit the checkbox down there at the bottom right. Now, when you activate 3D, something happens. It throws it into what's uh, known as a, a 3D object and if I put grid lines here, let's see, uh, let's activate the grid lines. You can see where 2D is right here centered inside this green drawn box here. Um, that's where the image fits. That's where the image sits. So whenever you're previewing the house in 2D, this is where it sits. It sits nice and centered. Whenever you go to 3D though, it puts it on the grid and it kind of moves it over to this side over here. And it it can be kind of annoying. So I like, first thing, these grid lines, they kind of annoy me. So I have to get rid of them. All I have to do is I have to go in here, click on the grids, and then hit the active. And that deactivates them. Now again, the first thing that you notice is that it's off-centered. Maybe it's better to come in and give it a full straight on view. Now I'm using a mouse with a clicky wheel, a little clicky wheel, and whenever I push down, click on the clicky wheel, and then I scroll, or I scroll, meaning I move my mouse across the, the desk here, click on the scroll wheel. Look, I can reposition this where this actually looks a little bit better and fills in or fits in a little bit more with my viewing angle for when I'm sequencing or when you're mapping. So now the second thing that we need to do when we're in 3D is to, to we have to move the canvas. Uh, if you use your left click and then just move your mouse across the desk, your, your left click will do this and it allows you to turn all of the different directions. Now, if you're not using 3D, this might not be very helpful to you, but this is the basics to just working within 3D. So the next thing I, I like to do is I like to get centered so that it's a nice view straight on of the house where I can see pretty much everything that's going on whenever I'm sequencing. So this here, this here looks pretty good. I like this. This is to me is a, a great, great straight on view. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this as my normal default. Okay. So if I right click here and we go to uh, set current point viewpoint as default, boom. Now we've got the set as default. If I go back here to uncheck 3D, here is what it looked like. If I click on 3D, now it says, oh, this is my home position. This is where my default position is. Now, this is really helpful if you don't want to go back and see what it looks like. Remember, remember how it was up here, you know, kind of like this before here. Well, so now what we can do is we can restore default viewpoint. Boom. Now we have this default viewpoint that is ready for you to sequence. So that's one thing that you can do with the 3D. So now let's go ahead and zoom out. Let's go in and find a different camera angle that might be helpful if you were sequencing. 
And I say this is a good one right here. This is a um, this is a front left of the house. We could do a right click and we could save current viewpoint and we can give this viewpoint, uh, this camera angle if you will, a front left because I'm looking on it, I'm not looking from behind it. And then we could do another one over here. So we'll do a right click and we will do uh, save current viewpoint and we'll call this front right. Now it kind of makes sense if we if we go ahead right click and uh, restore default we're back in our center we could make this into a center point and uh, we could do a uh, save current viewpoint as center point we'll call it center view and one other one that might be helpful if you have a really deep yard a deep front yard with maybe you might want to go and go overhead like this and zoom out a little bit and now you have this overhead kind of a view and if we take a second and we just kind of uh, we, we give it all a little you know a little bit of finesse a little change here there whatever and then now what we do is we go in and right click and we do a save current view and we call this overhead front so now we have four different views. That's enough for you to play with. You could do as many views as you like, I think. I don't know that there's actually like any kind of, uh, there's no limit uh, that you could put in there. But now I want to focus on getting into the sequence. Let's do the sequence and we'll show you these four camera views and see what, you, what, what kind of things that you can do, the differences between some of these different things. So let's add a, let's add a couple timing marks here like this one here, we'll do this one here, we'll do this one here. That should do. Oh, we got four. We got four different views. So we'll do four different timing marks. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try using some of these views. Let's just insert a layer below here. And I'm going to put the on effect down. And I'm going to change it to blue. And we'll go ahead and stretch that out. There we go. That should work. And then what I'll do here is I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and put a shock wave down. And I'm going to put the shock wave in white to red. And then we'll go into options. We'll do a little bit of options work here. Scale to buffer. And we'll change this to 110. So that should shock wave all the way across the entire house. I'm going to change to per preview. If we change to per preview, that opens up our 2D camera. And if we drop down we can see now we have four different camera angles they don't call them camera angles on the layout tab when we go over to the layout tab they, they, they don't call them that that's a viewpoint but the camera angle boom right there so now if we go to the front left and then we ch and we have the effects selected here we'll change this to the front left and now what xlights is doing is it's imagining hey here's that front left angle that we set earlier and this is where the shock wave is going to happen from so there's one way that you can activate the effect but it only works in the per preview to open up the 2d to camera but you have to have your cameras preset so now what does this look like if we change this to uh, another shock wave over here and we change this from front left to front right so let's go over here to the front right this was kind of the vantage point we had before and then let's go ahead put another shock wave down here and let's change the view to the center point so now if we go back here to the center and we look at the center on we're looking at it from the center point camera view this is really neat uh, and then finally we can do the last one um, shock wave there we go uh, now you can go overhead to the overhead view. So now, if we look at it from here, you can see the shock wave originates from here and then it goes outward from that point. So maybe if you had some things in your front yard, see how it's shock waving out? Maybe I'll turn the white off there. Those are AC props in the front yard that get activated whenever they hit a certain location. That effect is actually activating it 
first because it's closer to the back and then the other ones get it last. So it's really interesting that you can use the per preview render style and change the camera views depending on what look you're going for. But there's there's one more thing I haven't shown you yet and that would be, and we'll do a add another timing here, and I'm going to add a couple more layers below. And I'm going to stretch this effect uh, out, we'll move it down a couple. What happens when we add one shock wave of each type to with all of these different view styles here? And I'm just copying and pasting them right now. And I'm giving them different colors. There we go. And the first one was here. And we'll make this one yellow. There we go. So now you have kind of a rainbow look. But you have one shock wave coming from this point here, the yellow one. You have the green shock wave, which comes from the right side here. You have the red, which is coming from the straight on view. And then you have the white one, which is coming from the top down view. So there's a lot to play with there, guys. I hope that you learned something new today. Maybe if you want to try doing some specific effects with the different camera views. You can enhance some of the effects that you've already mapped into your layout. I do highly suggest trying this with some of the all house, the all display, the all yard. There's going to be a lot of fun things that if the sequencer or like myself or uh, any of the other vendors did something on those specific things, you might make a small change here and be able to really show off something very neat and very interesting in your show that you've never done before. Well guys, that's everything for me here at Pixel Pro Displays. It's been wonderful seeing you again. We hope that you are getting everything set up for the holiday season. This coming week, every Tuesday, we get together in our Tuesday night Zoom room and this Tuesday happens to be one of our open mic nights. So if you have questions, one of the one of the topics a few weeks ago that we did was moving heads and people loved the session because we answered a ton of questions. We were we were answering questions up until 11:30 at night before we even got started with the after dark. So there's not much more fun that you can have than you can find on Tuesday. And speaking of Tuesdays in 2 weeks, it's election night and PPD is going to have a special event in our Zoom room. So you are welcome to join us. I have a big plan planned for everybody to join us. So if you do not want to put up with the political crap, come on over. We're going to have some fun in our PPD Zoom room. Guys, that's everything. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining us. If you liked the video, give us a huge thumbs up. If you haven't done yet, so hit the big subscribe button down below. And don't forget the bell for notifications. And please, if you like what we do here and you want to support us at Pixel Pro Displays, become a PPD Sequence Club member. You get one awesome sequence. We call it the Triple Play Sequence every month, new to the store. And you get to choose from that one or two other songs. We call it Triple Play because you get three songs. November is pick your own month. That's in a week. That's, that's literally next week. So join the club. You'll get to pick your own song next month, but every other month we do three songs for the store. One's new to the store. The other two are usually from the store. And uh, we offer you a number of special pricings on different services and different uh, vendor affiliate discounts from our vendor affiliates. Guys, thank you again for joining me. This is Clyde signing out. Have a wonderful evening. We will see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye for now. Hello and welcome to the PPD YouTube channel, folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. It's great to see you all again on this fantastic end of October PPD sequence. PPD sequence. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Oh, gosh. All right, cut. It's like my first time doing this. There we go. That works. <laughs> so it's really neat. It's really interesting that you have some options to play with whenever it comes the 2D camera and the 2D uh, the 2D camera and the pre uh, the 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 so it's really interesting that you can you know utilize the render styles the. 
But there's one more thing that I haven't shown you, showed you, shown you, shown you. I haven't shown you yet. <laughs> <laughs> this coming week is a uh, our Tuesday uh, uh, some night. It's a night. It's a special night. It's a Tuesday night. <laughs> Uh, what is it? It's a Twinkle Tip Friday. No, it's not a Twinkle Tip. Damn it. What is it? It's a Tuesday. What? My brain's f farted. Holy crap. It is. <laughs> so if you have nothing else that's going on, every Tuesday we get together in our Tuesday night Zoom room.